You're listening to a recording from the Bread of Life Missionary Baptist Church at 1924 West 63rd Street under the leadership of Pastor David L. Sutton. Here at the Bread, our mission is winning, teaching, and developing the total person for the kingdom of God, to be the people of God, motivated by love for God and love for others. Enjoy the message. I don't know about next Sunday. I don't know. We, tomorrow's not promised to us, but I thank God for this Sunday. Thank God for this day. And so we want to continue with the theme, uh, enlarging our territory. And so from a very popular passage of which you all already read, the prayer of Jabez, uh, and I read it from First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. If you can't stand, why don't you stand in the presence of God as we read the, the word of God. If you're there, say amen. If not, say wait one minute. Okay. It is in the bulletin too. It's in the table of contents. That's how I learn. Some of you all have it on your phones, your iPads, etc. And that's fine. If you dare say amen. And the reason as follows, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast or enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm or evil so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and to the edification of our souls. You may be seated. Enlarge my territory. No more excuses. Enlarge my territory. No more excuses. This past week, my wife would tell you I was in a bit of a struggle uh, as it relates to some pain. Uh, you know, this type of pain can uh, potentially make a grown man cry. Now, I didn't cry. Didn't cry. But Lord have mercy, it make you want to cry. Uh, I'm speaking of a toothache. Lord have mercy. A toothache. I mean, he had my whole side of my face aching, neck. It even felt like my lip was hurting, was throbbing. And uh, it, af it affected how I uh, ate. I think I lost some, some weight. My wife said I didn't need to lose any more weight. And uh, uh, speaking of rest, um, you know, that suffered a bit. And then interaction with people. You know, you keep your words to the minimum. And I know what y'all thinking now. I want to pass this toothache still bothering him. Uh, it has a way of affecting uh, your whole life. And so guess what I decided to do? Yeah. Uh, well, you would think I would go to the dentist. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. We we put the dentist off to the very last minute. But I did marry a pharmacist. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I called uh, the doctor to give my wife authorization to prescribe me some painkillers. You know, hook me up, sister. Hook me up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it worked for a while. The, the, the only problem is, is that she could only give me temporary relief. Temporary relief. You see, I would have to go to the dentist who can give me more than temporary relief 
Well, even, go even further and give me a permanent cure. Is there anybody want a permanent cure of their pain? Y'all still think I'm talking about the toothache pain. Now, that I, I'm, ta I'm going deeper than the physical pain. There's some pain that many of us are dealing with on the inside. Pain that's continuously nagging at us and, and, and bothering us and, and has affected how we rest at night. It has affected how we eat. Some of us eat less. Some of us eat more. We, we eat and, and we try to find our own painkillers. Mm -hmm. our, uh, our own fleshly ways of curing pain. Can anybody say nicotine? Yeah, nicotine. Some of us, you know, do they still sell the pack of cools? Uh, Y'all don't want to say anything for fear. You might, yeah, pastor, they still sell it. Oh, they, you know, you know, or else, you know, if we 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 might even go deeper than nicotine and deal with that certain herb. Ah, uh, nobody do that here in ch in church. You know, talking about I'm using it for medicinal purposes. Yeah, right. And then you know we have a way of drinking, and I'm not speaking of red Kool Aid. No drinking. What are some of those drinks? Jack Daniels and uh, y'all might as well say it. I know you know it. What <laughs> Hennessy? What? I don't know about that past. I don't know about that stuff. I only drink Welch's grape juice. Yeah, yeah painkillers. Painkillers. We. We go from one relationship to the other thinking that somehow that get my mind off my problems, off my troubles. You know, we go out with our special friends. Oh, Lord have mercy. Pain, yeah, I'm still in the text. I'm still in the text. Yeah, and some of us have special, special friends named Macy's and Neiman Marcus. Okay, as I said, we were with you. Until you start talking about shopping, you know, you know, we, you know, we have a way of getting hooked up to coffee in the morning. You know, you know, coffee at night. You know, we got all these painkillers, pain relief. We can't live without these things. But ask the person, when was the last time you prayed? When was the last time you gone to God? Many times we treat God like we I treat the dentist. We wait to the very last minute. But here we speak of Jabez, who know exactly what to do when it can't comes to pain. He goes straight to the person who can give him the permanent cure. Anybody know his name? His name is what? Jesus. And the paradox of this story is God in his providence uses Jabez's pain to push him to his destiny. He uses his level of discomfort to push him to a place he desired to be, although he's in a place he don't want to be. I wonder what are some of you all going through. The way you can really appreciate verse 10 where it speaks of Jabez crying unto God is if you take a look at verse 9. Can we have a, it's a short Bible study where here in verse 9 uh, the historian sets it up in the previous verses. The historian, he, he writes about the different clans of Judah. He, he writes the different names, and he seems to have a grocery list. If you look further up in that chapter, as he speaks of the descendants of Judah, naming them one after the other, 
But then when he gets to Jabez's story, he seems to put a comma there. He pauses there and, and, and he stops just to give us a little trailer of his story. He doesn't tell us everything, but he, he tells us enough to keep us curious to want to dig deeper. Anybody want to dig deeper? And to a story, hoping that we can find some level of identification with his story and end up with the same ending. Anybody want the same ending that Brother Jabez received here in this text? He stops. Then he makes a bold statement about Jabez. He seems to give an overview, overview of Jabez's life where he says what? He, 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 he was more honorable than his brothers. I often wonder, what would they say at our funerals? What would they say when they eulogize us? Would they have to try to reach and find some stuff and start lying in church? Or would they be able just to dig from a whole wealth of good things about you. Here in this text, it seems to me that the writer, he takes notices, notice of the, 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 the different names of four Jabez, and, and, and he, 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 he names them. And, and that's very important when it comes to uh, the Jewish people. It was very important for them to understand their genealogy, to understand where they came from. Uh, they are perhaps some of the, the greatest historians uh, mankind have ever seen where they can trace their clan, their tribe back many, many years, if not centuries. And, and so in this text, you see the historian writing down these names. And, 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 and when he got to Jabez, he, he stopped says, this man I want you all to take notice of. I, I want to give a short commentary on this man and, and, I, and I want to state my reasonings for why I believe that he was more honorable than his brethren. He says uh, in, in verse uh, 9 he says uh, his mother named him Jabez saying he, he I, I gave birth to him in pain. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, historian, you, you just said that he was an honorable man, more honorable than his brethren. And then you go and speak of his mother saying he was a pain. What, what is it about this contrast, right? uh, brother writer, historian? How, how is it that you say he's an honorable man, but his own mother called him pain? And literally, the name Jabez means pain or to cause pain. Now, I know that many of our parents have called us a pain in the neck. And I'm keeping it clean. But when, 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 when mama name you pain, that's a whole nother level of pain. Uh, pain so deep that I believe it goes deeper than the physical. And I know, thank God for the mothers, who have endured much pain when it comes to your children. Thank God. Thank God for the women. I thank God I'm a man. And I honor the women, the mother, the mothers of the day who not only have one child, but we have multiple children enduring the pain. And I heard, I just heard that there's no pain like childbearing pain. Am, am I right, lady? Did I hear that? Yeah, and uh, the, 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 the drug epidural came from heaven. That's what I, <laughs> I 
I know it changed my wife's life, changed her life. Uh, but I believe it was it, it, it was it was it was deeper because you don't name your child pain because you had pain in childbirth. It, it, it seems to me that Mama had her own pain. Mama, Mama had her own issues. Uh, isn't that interesting how many times the source of our pain many times to come from people who are closest to us, who are closest to you and I. Pain. Some of us are thinking about our pain right now. It's not necessarily a physical pain. That pain has a name on it. It could be a husband's name, a wife's name, a Oh, I know I'm getting deep. A daughter, a son's name, a, a neighbor's name, a, a quote-unquote best friend's name, a, a special friend's name, or even a church member's name, name, name. Don't worry, I won't call you out. Just keep looking ahead. We won't know about your pain. You won't know about it. But I know we all can testify to some pains. Some of you all are even afraid to raise your hand. You might be sitting next to a pain right now where you're struggling within. Struggling within how to deal with the pain. And isn't it interesting that his pain originated in his family? In this family. Somebody catch that. Somebody catch that. I'm just here to tell you the truth that there's no such thing as perfect families. Families without issues. Oh, yeah, every family in here got issues. Oh, y'all quiet on me. All types of pains in the family. You, you, you got in-law pains and woo, Mr. and Mrs. pains and, and, and junior pain. You know, we got pains all up in the house. Pains so bad you just look forward to only seeing them once a year. During the holidays, or you just Skype them just to say hello, or some of that nature. I know, I know I'm telling the truth. Sometimes pain call you, it call you, and you say, oh, Lord, not him or her again. And I'm not here. I know you, I know I'm in your neighborhood because some of y'all are so uncomfortable. I can see you just squirming in your seat. You all have ignored cause I've done it too. I've I set you free. I've done it too. There's some, been some pains on my phone, Dick and Daniel. I just said, I won't answer it today. I would take voicemail because how many of you all know misery love company and pain has a way of spreading? Spreading all over. And here in this text, this, this, this pain starts at home. And can you imagine how Jabez must have felt when his mother named him pain? In the classroom, in the, and the teacher calls out his name. And he has to raise his hand when the teacher calls Jabez. The pain. Something deep. Can I go a little deeper? Now, many of us are dealing with some pain. And we think if we ignore it, it'll go away. Give me a few more minutes. We think if we ignore it, it'll disappear. But how many of you all know that the more you ignore it, the worse it gets? And here the mama passes on her pain to a child. Oh, the, 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 the fear I have as a father is not to, to give my issues to my son. You know, more is caught than taught. And your children watch you. You know that, right? You know that. And the very things that drive you crazy as a parent is where they learn it from. Guess who? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, have mercy. Pastor, this is church anniversary. What does this have to do with church anniversary? It has everything to do with church anniversary. Why? Because hurt people always hurt 
people. And when there's a bunch of hurt folks in church, it just spreads throughout the place. And people stop going to church because they can't find encouragement because there's nothing but pain all around you. But I love Jabez's story. The Bible says he cried unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord to deal with his pain. And the reason why I spoke of some of our areas of pain relief, we all are guilty of that to some uh, degree where we look towards something that could give us uh, a temporary relief. We know we had to come down again, but we just look for things to try to get, a, get our minds off or, or whatever may be stressing us out. And that's okay. I, I go to movies sometimes to, to get my mind off of things. It's nothing like watching a movie with somebody with more issues than me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'm glad I'm not as bad as that person. Uh, but, but the point I'm making is it's, 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 it's all right. But please understand, God stands as the healer. He is the person who's our comforter. He's the one who can give us hope in the midst of hopelessness. So even if you're getting pain from the people closest to you, tell somebody there's still a way out. And his name is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus, and, and, and here in the text, he, 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 he deals with this. The writer, he talks about how his mother named him pain. Now, the, the question we must deal with is, how, how do we respond to our pain? Many of us are not willing to go deeper into what may be the cause of our pain because to dig into it becomes even more painful. That's what's so hard about a dentist. He goes right to that painful area. And when I submit under the hygienist's mouth wide open, can't say anything hardly. But when she hit that nerve, oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Feet start kicking. You start grabbing on to whatever's within the reach. You, you start making sounds like, ah, 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 ooh, uh, ah. Because they right there, they right there. And, and what the, the dentist or the hygienist is trying to, to get us to understand is, in order for me to solve your problem, I got to go deeper to where it, it, it begins and then once I get down to the root of it I can solve the problem and that's the reason why many of us don't want to go to God because we know God is forcing us to go deeper deeper into the situation that's why many times people fall asleep when the word is going forth because they don't want God to start doing x-ray on their own pain. So you rather ignore it. All the while this pain is driving you crazy. It's affecting every area of your life and you have the audacity to tell people I'm okay. No, you not. You're wreaking havoc all over your life. Your marriage just broke down. You can't keep a job. Nobody trusts you. Because there's some pain down within that you refuse to acknowledge. And so you keep on making excuses. Well, you know my mama was like this. My daddy was like that. I'm not playing the dusters. I'm just telling what I hear. You know, you know, you, you just don't understand. It's hard for a black man out there. It's hard hard for a, a black woman out there. It's hard for a sister. 
It's hard. I mean, it's as hard whether you white, black, Hispanic, green, yellow, or purple. It's just hard, Pastor. And then you want someone to stroke you in your pain. Oh, it's going to be all right. It, it, oh, yeah, you're going to make it. And, oh, yeah, the Lord is good. Yeah, oh, don't worry. Be happy. We look for all these different little sayings, and many times the person who's supposedly stroking you, they got just as much pain as you do. They can't help you. They, they got more issues than you. You going to them for answers. And the Lord is saying, when are you going to hear the truth and receive the truth? Don't you know the truth will what? Set you free of your pain if you just acknowledge your own pain. So God is saying, you got to go deeper. And Jabez, he wasn't afraid. He, he, he said, this pain is deep. My own mama named me, named me pain. Oh, it may not be your mother, but it was somebody close to you that called you a name that you'd never forgotten, even as an adult. All oh, that old saying that sticks and stones will break my bones or names will never hurt me, that's a lie. That's a lie, because I remember some nicknames used to talk, call me, and guess what? I still remember like it happened yesterday. And I'm not telling you, because I don't want to hear you call me that same name. And here's the issue. We believed it. We received it. We allowed somebody to define us. And the problem with someone defining us is that we give them the power to tell us our destiny. But the devil is a lie. There's no way you will have the last word in my life. I don't care what you call me. You can call me everything under the sun. But I know that the word of God upon my life is the word that counts. So here... Jabez, understanding that his own mother, somebody who he trusted, somebody who you trusted, put something in you that you have an issue of getting out of you. And who knows, the name may be somewhat true. He never said that this name that was given him was a lie. I don't know the mama story I don't know but what we have to cure ourselves of is not taking the blame for somebody else's issues oh I'm not trying to get into Jabez's mother's business but Jabez had nothing to do with her laying down he had nothing to do with that that was all on her she made that decision. That wasn't Jabez's fault. And many of you all need to set yourselves free of allowing yourself to walk under guilt because somebody's trying to place their issues on you. The devil is a lie. You already have enough of your own issues, let alone carrying somebody else's. What I love about this text is he stopped it right there in his tracks, in his life. He stopped the generational curse. He stopped it. He didn't use excuses of becoming a victim in his situation. He said, I'm going to stand up and be a victor. I'm going to be victorious in this situation. I'm not going to make excuses. It reminds me of a story that Bishop Jakes gave when he spoke of uh, uh, these uh, uh, two young men who grew up under the father who was an alcoholic. And they asked the son, uh, why are you an alcoholic? He says, because my daddy was an alcoholic. And then they asked the son who wasn't an alcoholic, why aren't you an alcoholic? 
He said, because my daddy was an alcoholic. Somebody catch that after a while. It's up to you. You can decide to be a victor or a victim. It's in your power whether or not you start making excuses or you stand up on the word of God and says, oh, the Bible says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication to make a request made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will what? Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I'm just telling you what prayer can do if you call on them. Have you called on them? No, I'm not talking about those little wishy-washy prayers, uh, the prayers we say before we eat, you know, or before we sleep, now nah, lay me down to sleep, you know, all that stuff. No, no, no. I'm talking about what Jabez spoke of, where he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord answered his prayer. This is the story of Jabez, and I love, oh, I, I got to move. Oh, I love how he decided not to allow his past to dictate his future. I, I, I love that. I love that. How he used his history to get him to another level as a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block. Oh, somebody hear me. It, 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 I love this. And, and what made the difference, I believe, for him, and I believe the historian was trying to bring out as it relates to him being honorable most amongst his brethren is the fact that he knew who to go to when it related to his pain. He cried unto the Lord. He says, oh, that you will bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge. Isn't that interesting that he asked that? I, I would think that he would just start off by saying, Lord, just take away my pain or change my name like you changed Jacob's name or change Abraham's name. You know, some of that nature. I would think he would do something like that, naturally speaking. But no, he doesn't do that first. He, 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 he prays that the Lord would enlarge his territory. Now, what does his territory have to do with his pain? What, what, what does his territory and God enlarging his territory uh, have to do with whatever pain he's going through? I, I believe that, that, that what he was saying is that whatever my mama declared upon my life, I pray you make her a liar. And give me increase. That despite what my enemies say, despite what they call me back in the day, that I must stand above and beyond the rest. Lord, enlarge my territory. Show your power off in me. Can anybody testify to that? How you made liars out of your enemies. Oh, let me say it better. How God made liars out of your enemies. David said something like this. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Somebody know what I'm talking about. How the Lord will make your enemies your foot stool when you cry unto the Lord. And that's what occurred in this text. He said, Lord, multiply. Give me increase. That's what I love, the color green. Green, it, 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 it symbolizes increase. Symbolizes multiplication. It symbolizes the Lord giving us growth. And, and that's what it's all about. It's the Lord giving us increase. The biggest danger to the church is, is, is when people become satisfied. Oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But it, 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 the biggest danger to the church is when people think that what they have of Jesus is enough. In other words, they think because they've been saved for 20 years and, and they've been going to Bible study and, and they've been teaching that they know everything there is about the Lord. That devil is a lie. Jesus says, my thoughts are above your thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I think, he says, so far above what you're thinking, as high as the heaven is above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. And, and do you all know how wise God is? That even in his weakest moment, if there was ever a dumbest moment, no such thing, but if there was a such thing as a dumbest moment of God, he's still smarter than we are. Oh, I don't want to bust your bubble, but the Bible speaks of us being like sheep. Sheep don't have any sense. They, they don't know how to operate in life without the shepherd. And the Lord has called us sheep. 
He didn't equip us to live independent of him. He has equipped us to depend upon him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want it. And so the point I'm making, there's so much about Jesus that if you want to live eternity, learning everything that you could learn about Jesus, you still ain't scratched the surface because there's so much about God and his love and his wisdom, his mercy and his power. Isaiah 40 speaks of how he holds the whole universe in the palm of his hand. How do you do that? How he holds the whole universe by the power of his word. Do you know anybody else like that? That's the God we serve. So I believe Jabez, he understood that. And he believed that God was greater than his pain. And that's why he said, I'm going to go to a greater God to give me a greater increase. Is there anybody who wants greater in their life? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Some of you all are clapping on cue. You clap because the preacher wants you to clap. But is there anybody in the house of the Lord who's hungry for more, who wants more, who's chasing after yeah. This is what God is speaking of. Have you ever prayed to prayer for the Lord to increase your territory? Oh, see, that's what I'm wondering. Oh, can I say this? Oh, I know y'all ready to eat. I know y'all ready to eat. I know, I know, I know, I know. But, 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 but can, can I tell you a story? I'll never forget a person telling of how they own some fish. As a matter of fact, they bought some fish for. That son, I'm not talking about J and J fish. I'm talking the fish that's actually alive. And these little small fish they had in a tank. A little, not, not, not a tank. It was a small little bowl. But the fish got bigger, and they kept going in circles in this small little fish bowl. So the parent decided to say, "Well, this is what we're gonna do, son. We're gonna get the fish." A larger tank. You give them a larger tank so they can have more room to swim in. So that's exactly what they did. They brought them into this large tank from this small bowl to this large tank. But guess what the fish kept doing? They kept going in circles. They didn't realize that their territory was already enlarged and they could swim all over. They still got the mentality that they, they're in this small little fishbowl. And don't you know there's many people amongst us, even in the church, can I say even in Bread of Life, who still thinking in a small fishbowl of 1911, a church across the street. Would you please tell somebody that, 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 that the Lord has given us a larger place to swim, that we're in a tank? So we got to move from the past to the future where there's bigger and greater and higher and larger? Is there anybody want to be like the fish who, who, who just swim all over the place? I, I, I want to be like, 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 like the fish out there in the ocean where they could go anywhere they please. The, the sky is the limit. You ever saw the end of an ocean? You ever looked out upon the shore, the seashore, perhaps on the Pacific Ocean, and you looked out there, did you ever see the other side? No, no, it seems like it just keeps going on and on and on and on. I'm telling you, I want to have a faith like Nemo. You remember Nemo's child, where they wanted to see everything. Oh, y'all missed that. I want to see everything. I want to go to Australia. I want to go down in Africa. I want to go through the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. I'm just trying to tell you that there's bigger and greater things that God has for you if you just call on him. Thinking bigger, thinking greater. What can you do even greater than last year in your ministry? What, what, what can you do? Have you even thought to ask the Lord, what can I do even bigger than before? Are you stuck in the same thing, doing the same thing over and over again for the last 42 years? The devil is a lie. There is greater things. And I'm here to tell you, I'm praying for increase. I'm praying that the Lord will enlarge my territory. I don't know about you. You can stay in the past. But I'm going where there's bigger, there's greater, there's increase. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Some of us came in the story, came on when the tank was big. 
But how many of you all remember when we was in a fishbowl? Oh, uh, this is a few. Anybody remember? Brother Life in a fishbowl. Diggy Daniels, a few of them. Dick Kelly. You see, y'all got to tell a story. You got to tell a story of when you was in a small area. Right there on 63rd and Honor. Yeah, the, the place was so small, y'all was hanging out the windows. Yeah, I, I remember that. The place got so small, y'all had to move within a month. Had to move within a month. I'm talking about a fishbowl. Then the Lord said, you know what? I got something bigger and better for you. Let me take you to 1911. Now, many people would think you wouldn't go to 1911 because that was a funeral home. But how many of you all know that when God speaks something, he can bring death to life? We turn that place that buried dead people into a place that raised people from the dead. Are there any transformed people out there? But guess what? That was still a small fishbowl. The Lord said, I got something bigger and greater for you. So where you sit right now, there is a story behind it. I know some of us can appreciate it because we came in in the middle of the story. But don't feel bad. God's got even greater things for you. I just want to tell you the story of how the Lord brought us to this place. Place worth almost a million dollars. Church had the audacity by the grace of God to pay it off in what? 13 years. Burn the mortgage in 2008. And now we're about to burn another mortgage in 2013. I'm telling you, we serve a mighty God. Oh, I won't stop right there. Do you see the land to your right? That's ours. Do you see the land in front of you? That's ours. Do you see the land to the left of you? That's ours. That's God enlarging our territory. I see a campus. I see something bigger and greater than just a church. I see a community center. Can you see it? I can see it. I see a gym. Can anybody else see that? I can see many kids coming to Christ. I can see us going into multiple services. I can see God doing a mighty thing in us. The question is, do you want God to enlarge your territory or do you want to stay in the fishbowl? The devil is a lie. I want to step into something bigger and greater. Is there anybody here in the house of the Lord who want to be like Jabez? That when he prayed the Lord to enlarge his territory, the Bible says that he granted our request. He granted the request of Jabez. And I'm here to tell you, we serve a God who's more than able. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you ever ask or think. I dare you to give God some praise in advance. He has given us the land. Take the city. He has given us a campus. Take the city. The start in Jerusalem. And then move into Judea. And then go into Samaria. And then the uttermost part of the world. Is there anybody who believes that? Am I by myself? Well, that's all right. I serve a God who can work and do it with or without you. I serve a God who can do all things. I serve a God who says if I'm for you, who can be against you? I just want to know, are there any people in here, anybody who said, I want God to enlarge my territory? Give God some praise if you believe he's able to do it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He has given us the land. And he didn't call us to raise weeds. He called us to build. To build into the lives of his people. And then to house them in a space where the people can learn and grow and do the same thing for somebody else. That's what he called us to do. Winning. Teaching. Developing the turtle person for the kingdom of God. To be the people of God. Oh, I can't hear. Is anybody believe that God is able to do that? Who love God and 
love others. That's what he called us to do. So what better day to start a new way of living than on the day of the church's anniversary. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ. Is there anyone? Thank you for listening to this recording. You can find more on our website at bolmbc.com. And remember, at the bread, you will get fed, both spiritually and physically.